what we have been discussing on in the after, on Saturday. And today we really try to make sure with a collective effort, we have a base data that we all can use, as well as also an agreed at least tokenizer. People can use, can try different tokenizer, but at least there should be um, a common tokenizer that we are all are using, at least we all test, so that when next, when we compare our models, our performance, it is not due to mainly because of the data or tokenizer. It should be something else. So um, with that, let's open the discussion and just, you know, what's, if there's any stopper, like, you know, basic discussion, and then we get into a bit more detail. Uh, Binyam. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Hi. Okay. Yeah. Is my voice clear today? <laughs> much, much better. Okay. Uh, Saturday was uh, like something else. It's completely it fixed one? now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I think it was also the mic. I think it must have been the mic. It was just not only the network, it was the mic. Some Something was off. The yeah, game was yeah, not the, right. The mic. The AirPods yeah. were making a mess. Okay. Uh, okay. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I have some questions. Good, yes. Uh, hope everyone also rested on Sunday and you rested as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we kind of rested, all of us. We had some sleep. Yeah, <laughs> by force. At least okay. I, I, I saw some people <laughs> opening up their, you know, spinning their EC2 and I realized, okay, so automatically now, uh, Sundays, it should just shut off itself. So, yeah, but... Okay. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> Okay. So we have a 24 GB GPU, right? Uh, for on the on the EC2. So yeah. last time I was discussing that we had a, an unstructured data, so it's kind of undeveloped. And after in some research, I kind of found out that most people, including the Chinese Lama, uh, have used a pre-training step of training the model, the base model, on unstructured and unlabeled data, just to give it, you know, uh, so it can learn grammar in context of the language, uh, or how, you know, the long-range dependencies and stuff. So, yeah, and uh, while reading through this, I kind of found out that you can actually uh, train or pre-train on a single GPU and limit your memory usage. Um, and in the NVIDIA websites, uh, which means we have to use batch sizes and uh, the steps of gradient accumulation. And for the int8 data type, it says we can use uh, a batch size which is a multiple of 60. But since we are using the yeah. NF4 data type, I'm not sure what type of uh, batch size we can use to, you know, pre the model. So this is my first question. Since we are using to learn, because we have a limited amount of uh, GPU memory. Yeah, uh, this is the base question. And also, if we have a label data, uh, I think it would be easy to inst to you know have an instruct type of fine tuning. But since uh, that data is not ready yet, I think we should retrain the model into you know having uh, to learn the Amharic language before we jump into the domain specific you know, task. So, yeah, uh, yeah. my main question is what kind of batch size to use for the any for or normal float point for data type, if it works. I did not try it, but I'm on the way I'm writing, you know, some scripts to fine tune the ATM GP. Okay, again, let's say, you know, the, so the pre-train, we are talking about on top of, for example, Lama 2. So usually that pre-train is considered, in my opinion, it's not the whole weight. Still is the the upper part of uh, the training. So that means the, the the last layers. So you can choose which which layers, but the last layers. And yes, depending on the model, uh, then you have restrictions. For example, the last layer, usually a fully connected layer, if it is you know one or two, four or whatever yeah. layer, so then I'm you are probably training. Um, so maybe you can so mute because your background is quite uh, actually close. Um, okay.
um, so and 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 depending on that size if it's like as i said something one or two, four then you are now 10 to the six so it's about a million um parameters it's because it's you're, you're connecting everything to everything in a fully connected layer if it is more if you are now adding so you can get easily and then that defines the memory size of course on top of the memory size that you know um i think because of because you can distribute um you, you like the the ones the frozen layers uh, they probably won't occupy that much space because they can be i think um handled but so the ones the active weights you definitely need so now from the memory side i think that's great or just like any pre-training um given that you are not holding everything and doing gradient um, back propagation on that from the batch size again it's about trial right um it's about first is your data how much data but at the same time it's how much uh, you can almost always you can try you, you can go and optimize that number you know watch batch size can fit i think there's an example in what i gave probably also there is uh you can try if there isn't i will i will uh, link that one you can try until it fails and then you can use that one so it's very simple trial uh, where it actually it's a simple trial and error to find the one the batch parameter that actually works in your training without overkilling it or without exceeding the memory. So I would say we can answer one time what fits for what model. You know what what um, so as long as we know exactly how many parameters and all that, I think then that becomes generalizable for everything. Yeah, you're you're right. I agree with you. Um, I will try to, you know, to use trial and error on the batch cells. Also, I'm not sure if if we can find, uh, you know, if we can use the unharmed llama. And I'm not really sure if we can find the last checkpoint that we trained it on. Uh, I'm for, some models, on for some models, we can. For, for example, Stable AI specifically released that. I think Llama 2.2, uh, there, there is the, the checkpoints, you can access them. Uh, I'm not sure about Mistral, and I'm not sure about Falcon. Okay, so so basically, we're just gonna take you know the the last layer or the last checkpoint, and then use our unlabeled data to yeah. teach it on work, and then fine tune it to exactly. To I, I mean, I, 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 I imagine thing. that's what they did also, uh, Gary. Um, yeah, not... I saw the Gary source code. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they exactly that that's we can follow exactly for Lama too, that's the case. And then for any other models, we can adapt their method to others. Okay. okay. The the Chinese also I think they pre-trained it and then fine-tuned it. So basically Yeah, I mean I think this <laughs> confusion so pre-train and fine-tune. Let's not too much confuse it. It's the general word is still fine-tuned. If you use a, a uh, yeah. some weight um from existing model. Yeah. In general but the pre-train is now because of the parameter efficient fine-tuning then there is another cons different concept of fine-tuning which means adding parameters uh, instead of just the last mm. steps but exactly so otherwise it's the same you know it's fine tune in a, it has been a very long you know it's transfer learning has been there since the beginning of deep yeah. learning and um, in transfer learning almost always it's that element of fine-tuning the last layers and then recently because the models are bigger there has been a number of parameter efficient mm -hmm. tuning fine-tuning and 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 th but they are identical conceptually you are you are either adding parameter or modifying the some some mm -hmm. subset of parameters but yeah pre-train pre-training in the in the past the terminology was mostly used for one thing that was just uh, starting from the random weights for everything that you train. But now, because of the parameter efficient fine tuning, yeah. you have now pre trained also step within the pre train, pre train step one and pre train step two, then uh, parameter efficient fine tuning, another one. But they're all, all of them after the first training is, are, can be considered as fine tuning because you are still fine tuning. Yeah. 
something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the 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 thing is exactly as I think. Let's okay. adopt the Gary model and let's you know the references you got and everything on pre-training, a pre-trained model, um, okay. and that one doesn't need any data. It's just all as much as data we find. Let's just put it to it, and let's fine tune. And then it's about getting, you know, better and better uh, Amharic understanding, grammar as no. well as yes. Yeah. Okay, Nasrallah. Oh. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Morning, yeah, Baba. Morning. Um. So, actually, what I want to ask first is that um, how f how far we could use the GPU because, and on Saturday, uh, my team and I decide to go with three mode, uh, three uh, models, and let's see and try to see the one that will perform the best so um i'm a bit concerned about that one that's actually the first question i mean yeah you you will you will see you will hit the the limit in in you know for, from our side mm -hmm. you have that 24 18 with 24 gigabyte of um uh, gpu and you can leave it and will not close it even if it costs a lot but when it's idle, it will be closed. But otherwise, idle means for us just that the number of SSH connection to it is uh, zero. That means no one is connected, as well as when mm -hmm. the model is not running or any the CPU is below 1%. And in that case, we switch it off just so that you can start it when you come back again. Again, that happens only over the last an average of 15 minutes. Now, so within that constraint, you can train anything. Um, if, if it fits. Another part you do is that, okay, maybe you want with other teams, you can just try different things. You can pair with that, you know, because every group means one machine. So yeah. you could you could do again a network um, with others as well, and then use their GPU or, you know, the, the same. So, but the limitation is, yeah, it's the memory and the number of, processes you have or just one single GPU. Other than that, you don't have any uh, any other constraint. I'm not sure if I understood the question. Yeah, might be might be it. Uh, let me let me see it and yeah. when I get to the bridge across it I will let you know. Okay, yeah. Because I think yeah. it's it's it is you know it's uh, really hardcore things will is not done by single CPU, by a single GPU. But mm. we, we are also, you know, we, we are not that, um, we don't have that much budget to, to spend more than that. Therefore, otherwise, you know, any of the training happens actually over extended number of days, some of them in months and some of them in weeks, some of them uh, a day, full day, and then probably on more than 100 or more than a thousand GPUs. And all of them with probably you know, some of them are trained um, on A100 or H500 now, it's like, which means like nodes of GPUs. So we have, you know, we can't do much. We, we have to be strategic. We can't, we don't have that much, um, um, that much flexibility. Whatever we see in the papers, we can't implement them, unfortunately. But we can cover most of the very strategic decisions or strategic trainings we can do because I think our GPU RAM is okay. 24 is considered okay number. Okay. 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 And the other one I would like to ask, is there any update on the data? It's especially, so when I say data labeling, first one is actually the data labeling. The other one is the data, like if, if we have additional data related to the ads. I, yeah, so I, I think that's what we are going to be coordinating. Hopefully, there will be also just a tutorial by Nasi later. In the meantime, mm -hmm. we will be adding and just creating uh, and linking to your, to basically that a data. If you haven't created data, it, it will be, I will create data slash data and then common Amharic data. You will find alias there where it will be connected to, you know, I will be basically um, mapping that it's a mounted folder so it would be like this 
all common Amharic data will, is going to be uh, um, mounted from S3. So everybody who puts there will be shared across everyone. Awesome. And we will add, uh, we will be structuring and adding more data um, in there. So you should be able to, by, I think by the end of today, we should have a common database, a common data set that everyone can use with a description. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about it, and uh, maybe it could be something that crosses your mind, guys, is that um, instead of going to large channels that has large amount or a variety of uh, Telegram ads of different products, what about if we just focus for each category? For example, one thing I saw it is that on real estate channels, they are more precise and they don't even actually advertise anything else except real estate and that itself is actually save us a lot of time in terms of labeling work that we have to do so yeah. maybe if we be more precise about every channels it might not be as a large data set as it is but it will also decrease the amount of but it's not also vague as those channels for example like tip diaries which consist of different categories inside itself yeah so it's true i mean like we're going to go after whatever we can find but most of them they sometimes are groups not channels and in groups you can't download data and and also things like that are harder that's why we're going to be looking and nati will update probably in the afternoon um the state yeah that's right uh, okay, I just want to give you a quick update uh, for for the groups. Uh, I think uh, Telegram has has started the future of uh, the future for exporting their data. So, yeah, I think it might be different, but I'm just downloading the. I found one group that has around. Uh, I think it has a lot of ads. Mm -hmm. I, I'm 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 just exporting it. I'll look into it and. Uh, are if, those if it, if, yeah, Sorry, it's no. just an, an ad only group, so I'll just look into the data and I will let you know, guys, if if we can proceed with the groups for uh, just because the, the data has to be somehow structured, like you, mm -hmm. we can't use uh, somehow unstructured. For example, uh, the reason we chose Tikva and large channels are. Uh, we we want to create a quality advertisement so for example uh let's say you want a couch call this number it's it's an ad but it's not a quality ad right so we need it's to, not we especially need to. It's one one other thing i discovered is that uh ch um, channels that has uh, closed branding for example they are boring ads especially related to amharic generated so they can show you a pair of shoes and they will say like a 2000 ethiopian pair and 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 yeah. without nothing else. So it's mostly photos but but one thing i saw in real estate especially and car renting I, I have two channels it's not a lot but one one what i saw in their data is that they have literally almost five five or five lines of ads and, and five lines of uh, amharic ads and the pictures that about that thing or that items it could be a house or the car that they want to sell so and ironically most of the content is being written in in amharic which is could be rich enough for us um yeah that's what i saw uh, the other limitation i saw for example in, in in tech tech channels is that most of them they say the things or they state the things in english because most when they are talking about iphone 6 or iphone 12 and they are actually writing it in english and that itself we can't there is no other way around it so and in terms of the categories related to 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 text and clothes we actually might lose uh, 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 and well how do i say we might not find amharic uh, significant enough or significantly enough for us to generate amharic ads related to those categories and that uh, and that's what i found in the last two days of going around different telegram channels as a manual way but um uh, but the fact that you mentioned the group might help us honestly but i'm not sure about it either That's right, it can go. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I meant you can go. Like I thought uh, your hands were raised, uh, but it was for the past maybe. No, I, not Nail, but the uh, hands raised. Ah, okay. Hand. That's right. Okay. Sorry. Go on, not Nail. Okay, guys. Uh, I just want to mention, like, when we talk about the data, so for our group, it was also like the major bottleneck. Uh, have you having the quality data but for this weekend we are searching for uh you know channels which are uh, ad rich where there are detailed explanation of the product they are advertising and we end up to have a good resource maybe like i think we can share it to nati uh, and you can see the list of telegram channels and you know the data that we cleaned you can see it like it's a uh, rich data we haven't labeled it yet but it's a uh, kind of relevant to at least our use case excellent that's my yeah. Yeah. yeah no that, that's excellent please share it and also i just created now a telegram group uh, at, uh sorry slack group that says telegram ad data you can just join it's a public one and let's put everything related to data there and also our updates whenever we update you know when we add data to it or when um will be there but yeah every group please just reach out maybe uh, either there you can just say like i have the data you know either send it to nat nile or put it in that common part under your group so you will see it in your instances the in, in under so i'm just going to mount everywhere so it's just going to take some time but i mean some time is probably 30 minutes but in, in the meantime, you can just exactly, you know, who has already collected data, additional data, please put it there so that we can organize. So Natnaya would be, um, will help us organize those data. And what needs to be also labeled will be added into the labeler so that people can label at the same time. Uh, so yeah, today, I think the plan should be, while some people in every team, of course, work on other areas, but a dedicated team should be on data and learning about what data is available, what data is shared, and also finding data to add. So contributing as well as learning what is available. Sorry, Yabob. Uh, sorry, yeah. Yabob. Um, how far we are on the labeling? I think it's, uh, we can see how much, but I'm not sure. I mean, I don't have that exact number. OK, I was saying, like, it, is, it doesn't need to be perfect. We are not actually expecting, but we just want something labeled to test out on our fine tuning. So do you think can we have access for that? I mean, yeah, yeah, is we will have, exactly. So the label data will be also in that folder. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. OK, Abraham? Yeah, so I have a question regarding the data as well. So yeah. uh, while we labeling, while we are labeling the data, we found a couple of uh, <coughs> images and uh, uh, links on a uh, couple of uh, text. Maybe if any one team uh, encountered the same issue, and I just want to check. I mean, in what sense? Like, is that they are not visible? The I, no, no the. the on the clean data on some of the text we found uh, some emojis and the links we, we we cleaned it up based on the not night notebooks but i don't know how or why uh, we found a couple of emojis on our data i mean it's it's in it's in a small amount but the pre-processed data you mean yes okay and um, there could be maybe just their start or some filtering can be maybe just is different but um yeah let's probably just looking at them if you if you find some examples and send it to net nile probably it would help yeah sure but are we removing net nile just emojis and stuff uh i shared uh, one one resource uh, the official uh, unicode uh, website so if you guys have we might miss the, some of the unicorns in the cleaning part. So uh, to actually check if uh, you the, the current the current emoticons or emojis. So you just uh, dump, uh, copy and paste to the Unicode website and get the, those do, Unicode do, characters. Why, why do we clean? Why do we clean emojis? Is that because uh, I'm assuming 
like ads usually have a lot of emojis and we need to generate them as well uh, yeah but uh, we I am I was afraid we will actually create another confusion to the model understanding the emojis the emojis like so, understanding yeah. the Amharic think, is hard enough uh, but I, I would say I think I would be much more pro like advocating we should not links and others definitely we can remove links so that it is a resource like a uh, link is a resource like it should not be generated um, but emojis are something that are useful to learn together just like another character Amharic character um, so I would say maybe just only removing only links and replacing them by just uh, even for them I would not I would not just totally uh, move them I would be much more removing only and replacing them by a URL um, let's say tag and such that you know it gener it if it requires a URL then it, you know that character you know that token would be used as well so some that would be useful because I think ultimately we want to generate and, and I mean emojis may, maybe it's the interesting thing is that we, we may even use them as a training, like predicting emojis uh, in the form of understanding Amharic as a training, because so what we don't know is how to really, we don't have a clear way of preparing instruct data. So that means, you know, in one way is just predict emojis, right? It's almost always think of it as a, how much the, the model works to predict something and to learn relationships. And I imagine, there is a very strong relationship between an Amharic word and an emoji. And that will help it, the model learn, um, and then they can be the labels. More than hashtags, emojis are better because hashtags, there's only one hash. While emojis, there are very many different types, so they might actually help. So I would say it's, it's, uh, it, might not, it might be very important, actually, emojis. Um, not they're not um something to be cleaned actually it's something to be predicted maybe or something to be added so at least yeah that's my 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 gut feeling so should we just leave them i'm sorry i think so yeah i mean as like innovate around them even like as i said even in your instruction some part of the instruction should be predicting emojis like if you know where they are i mean it's good that you now know where they are so that means if you know where they are, you know, you can ask the model, you know, what emoji is relevant here. And, and then it learns, you know, it, then you can use it as uh, supervised, I mean, it's a, as a label. Be so identifying them, the links and the emojis are good already. So it's not a waste, it's actually relevant. But instead of cleaning them, we use them as a as a training as a basically as a label okay uh the script is written in a way it, it extracts first and cleans next so you can yeah. omit uh both or you can use you can use it so for example for the hashtag uh, the, the approach was to collect to extract the hashtags and then uh remove the hash symbol or the total hashtag from the text so you can use the same approach to actually to generate uh sets of emojis for that text using the extracted emoji part em emojis part and also you can also just explore around it yeah i think that's my recommendation yeah you won yes so i just wanted to add on the emoji part uh, in the data side i won't say much because it's hectic for me because it's Amharic, but I think that emojis and LLMs, um, I think it's actually a 50-50 trade-off because sometimes it may confuse the model. For example, if someone uses a wrong emoji and now the, the model learns that emoji, you see, so when generating, it generates a wrong emoji according to what it has learned. So I think we should really think about this before first deciding whether to keep them or kind of like remove them that is my view but i really it's i really true. don't know 
it, it is true, but it's the same is for words, right? People may use a wrong word as well. I mean, okay. I know it's not the same as emojis, like because emojis are highly much more uh, also people who are very fun, were good at uh, writing, you know, a digital natives, they usually probably are better at emojis. But we can assume people who create actually ads are also as very good in using emojis because they usually okay. use emojis just to, so if it was a general population, maybe. But okay. I think in this okay. case, we have a, a strong case that actually emojis are used to amplify. And that means it has a relationship between, um, you know, what is being advertised and emojis. And um, I think that's what at least I, it, it needs to be tested with and without emoji. That's why it's having two preparations. Maybe we can we can have that. But okay. it's it's an important asset. So yeah, yes, all, yes, the, all the time. Agree. Very yeah. important, yeah. All the time, what I'm thinking, just this is this would help everyone. It's what information are you throwing, and what information are you keeping? It's all about information. You know, it's about we are learning from humans how they do. So everything about language is how people use it, and therefore, if there is any information in the data you can extract about people's usage, I think it helps. And then another part is how hard it is. To, to check pattern for the LLM. If it is a very easy, it was not gonna teach it. But if it is very interesting case, like as complex as the language itself, then, you know, then there is a, a, a lot more gain or a very, a lot of information that, um, that there is for that. So that's the, the case. Okay, so Mubarak. Okay, uh, to add on this, uh, we were actually discussing about this with my teammates and other colleagues too. And what we were planning is uh, for the first round, let's use uh, the text that that, ha that have not uh, have uh, an emoji. But for for the second round, uh, we actually uh, focusing on especially our channels. So. Uh, and not removing uh, the emojis when we do the second round. That was how we are planning. The only thing might be there, the issue is that the base model might not have the tokens. So like, you know, the basically the vocabulary. So it's important it has the vocabulary as well. So of course, I imagine emojis are more of a universal language. Therefore, whichever model you use, they probably have already emojis as the, you know, as in their vocabulary. But if you are replacing the vocabulary, it's important you include in the first step as well emojis so that they are part of the tokens. Okay. We will, I think we can check that from the tokenizer or something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you can check, like, if you give it, if you give it uh, like the different emojis as a subset, you can see how much it's uh, tokenizing them and how much, you know, which number it gives them. Okay, fine. Okay, great. Um, anything else around data? Because I mean, today is all about data and then also anything else that that is probably from the discussion we had, um, like, is everyone happy within their team? Should we restructure the team? Should we reduce it from six to five? Or should we keep as it is? Like, let's um, have as have you guys discussed within your team and everybody's happy? And it's just a matter of then killing it. Okay. Group six is okay. We are okay too. Group three. Group three is okay. Group one is okay. Okay, group two is okay. Anyone from group five? Okay, group five will do just fine. So group one and group four. Group one is okay. Group four. Group 
Oh, or yes. Yeah. Okay. So you are still discussing it. That's great. So what happens is that if you decide, you can also see which group you can because you have a resource. You know, you have your your machine. So you know somebody can also just try to attract you. Just come to our group, or you can do uh, on your own. But it's important just that you guys also discuss such that at the end you you learn most you deliver most and um and basically that so it's nothing got to do with you know uh, anything else just think of it as like okay you have a resource you know you have different contributions you can have like some of you probably have lots of experience already on this space or some of you have bring another language experience from that and um, and so just think about how it would help uh, what is the best use of your resource like your gpu and as well as your human resource so yeah let me know when when you um if you continue i'm fine as well just as it is yvonne so um okay so this is not about group four i think we have finished discussing the data because no one has raised any issues about the data yeah. i was talking about the gary model i actually got this bug which is a real bug that it has even gotten it has gotten flagged by people out there as a bug it's telling me um let me just read it something about self tensors and then it's telling me that i have bigger head so i was wondering is there anyone you, you, else you, you, you did you did what? what what did it say uh let me read it one minute it's telling me uh self tensor error error will decentralizing header header to large that is the error that mm. i actually get so i was just wondering is there anyone else who has encountered this or is it just did, did, did you discuss with, with alex um abdul hamid was, was yes, did, yes yes uh, yes yes we are using that. whatever the approach he was using yes that is the same approach i am using he also okay. saw the error and he was wondering why i was getting it so i was just wondering okay, it. okay. so maybe then let's see just we can if it's like got to do with any machine specific we will see um but yeah in principle okay. so i will just send me the screenshot of the okay okay the okay now okay. investigate okay. okay okay thank you great okay awesome i think then let's stop it here and um discuss and whatever data just please put it in telegram add data uh, channel in um in slack and yeah today you know aim for achieving that whatever you can do with respect to data try to do much of it today so that we put as much data as possible quantify how much data we have uh, and all that so that by tomorrow we have a clarity it's, we're not talking about data and quality we're talking about what can we do with it okay abraham uh, so I, sorry, I just wanted to make clear. Uh, do we give in on our data, the one we try to label, or just once we have discovered? So the, the one you try to label, almost always give it to Nat Nile so that he just puts it, like if it's the one that we already shared the data and to which you have a label. That one would be much more easier if you just send it to Nat Nile because that's a structure, it's in a database, and we keep it. Now, the other data that you just collect, put it uh in this you know in the new folder that we will create uh in your machine i will announce on, on a slack channel and there it's better just to put it in your folder and and then we will be able to see it but as soon as you put data please put a notification on telegram at data you know group whatever has added this data there you know, like that and we have added this much data either in terms of size gigabyte or something whatever whatever you have just put there what you think is relevant okay sure sounds like a plan wonderful okay thank you everyone bye